Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at a brand new beta of a project called Felix. Project Felix is a 3D compositing tool for designers. In other words, for people that are not necessarily 3D experts, for people that don't spend all day in 3D applications. But you're a designer, you understand the concepts of layers, you work with Photoshop, um, Illustrator, maybe InDesign, and you want to composite 3D elements into your photos. Or maybe even you're a photographer and you want to do that. That's what Project Felix is all about. So the, the initial beta just released today as of the recording of this video. It's available to all Creative Cloud members. And rather than talk about it, why don't I just show it to you? So first and foremost, to get your hands on Project Felix, you want to go up to your Creative Cloud application, uh, go to your app section, and it'll be, you know, I've already got mine installed, but it'll be in the area of uninstalled or apps that haven't been installed yet area. Um, and if you haven't, if you don't see it there, go ahead and check for updates to make sure that you're refreshed and you're on the latest version of Creative Cloud. Um, and you, it will refresh any apps that you haven't installed. So Project Felix is already installed, ready to go. Now, here's the image that I'd like to work on. I've got this image open in Photoshop. I've also got this image saved to my Creative Cloud library, so therefore I don't have to go looking for it on the desktop or go find it in the operating system. Um, however, if you just save it out and you wanna bring it in that way, you can, you can do that. You don't have to use libraries, but libraries will certainly make your life a lot easier. All right, so I've got the image ready to go. Now let me explain a little bit about what I wanna accomplish. What I'd love to do is I've got this model standing here on a mountain scene in, in, in uh, Nevada. And you even notice she's got her hand kind of positioned in a way like she'd be holding a purse or a bag or something in her hand. Well, I'm gonna give her that bag. It's the holiday season. I'd love to give her a gift bag to hold. And that's exactly the kind of thing that Project Felix is for. Because while I could go get a photo of a bag, if I don't photo it or, or, or shoot it at the right angle, it won't look right. And I'd have to spend a lot of time making sure that I shoot it on a plain background so I can cut it out at the perfect angle and then bring it in. If I ever wanna make any changes to it, then I gotta start all over again. So with Project Felix being able to work in 3D, I don't have to worry about those uh, issues. So let's pop over to um, Project Felix. And now that I'm here, um, it's got a pretty standard basic interface for this being a public beta, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say create a new project. That will give me a new canvas to start with, and I'm gonna go ahead and expand the window out, make it take up the full size of my monitor here. And uh, the next thing it's asking me for is either to bring in a 3D object, which as you can see, there's a library of 3D objects built into the application. Uh, and just so I don't forget, you can also get additional 3D objects from stock.adobe.com. So if you go to stock.adobe.com now, there's a 3D section and you can go grab additional new 3D objects anytime you want. Many of which are free, some of them are not free. So some of them are actually at you know, you have to pay for. But um, feel free to grab as many free ones as you want and composite those into your images. All right, so let's head back to Felix. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring in that background image. So I'm gonna go to my libraries panel here. And in my libraries panel, I can see two versions of that file. I want the full length version where we can see her hand. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that in. So it applied that as a background and loaded it in. Now you can also kind of see kind of ghosted out in the background here, there's like a, a, a plane and that's the, um, the horizon. And, and what's cool about this is I can adjust that horizon line because it doesn't necessarily know by default where, my, where I want my horizon to be or where the horizon is in the photo. It can auto detect one, but I'm gonna actually make it where I want it to be. I'm gonna bring that grid down to right where her feet are because that would be my horizon for this particular shot. You can also tilt it if need be. You can uh, raise or lower either side. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is go back to my assets. And in my assets, well, there's a shopping bag already there. You have this bag as well. This is not one that I bought. This was actually included in uh, this first release of Project Felix. So all I have to do is just drag that on. Now we'll warn you, 
Uh, once I drag that in, it's going to come in at full size. It's a big bag. So it's loading that bag in. And like I said, it's a big bag. All right, so now that the bag is there, I'm going to go ahead and go to the scale control. And uh, it scales from the center, so I'm going to make it really small first. Uh, smaller, smaller, smaller. Maybe something about that size. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull it down. So I'm just switching all my tools over here. And uh, just to give you an idea of where we are, so you have your tools on the left side. You have kind of what you would consider layers, but this is your scene um, panel on the left side here. Your assets, the document library, things where you will get things from. And then on the right, you have a context-sensitive properties panel. So as you select things, uh, what you can do to those things will be over here on the right-hand side. So you have your tools. So for example, if I wanted to rotate that in 3D, uh, it brings up a widget right here on screen. So here's my 3D version of that bag. I can rotate it um, on any axis that I want. Oop, let me go ahead and turn it back that way a little bit. And um, so for example, I want to turn it, tilt it this way, I can. I can rotate this any way that I see fit. If I want to bring it down that way, I can. Uh, so woo, swinging that bag in the wind. All right, so now I'll get the bag in the position that I want. Maybe turn it back a little bit more. There we go. And now we'll go ahead and again, grab the move tool for this and we'll just move it in place. Now there's one problem. If she was really holding this, her finger would be on the outside of the strap. And I can't really do anything about that in Felix, but you'll see what I'm gonna do about that at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and just put it where it would be, even though technically it would be inside of her hand, not on the outside of her hand, but we'll fix that later. All right, so now that I got it in place, um, I could be done if that's all I wanted was a white shopping bag, but there are a couple things that we wanna to do to make this look a little bit more realistic. Number one, we don't have to live with a white shopping bag. We can go ahead uh, for every 3D object you bring in, it, and it depends on who built it and how they built it, but it will have different properties in it. So this bag has two surfaces in it. Um, it's got um, the same material on both, or actually two different materials there. And what I want to do for that bottom material, which I think is the outside of the bag, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to go to my materials panel. And again, these are materials that are built in. I kind of, I don't know, I just love this copper look. It's probably a little bit overkill for this bag, but let's see if I see one I like better. Uh, the wood's kind of nice too, but again, not really suiting this bag. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the copper look into it. And that will basically apply to the bag and make the bag have like a copper look to it. Now, uh, as I rotate it around, you can kind of see we made a metallic copper bag. And that's pretty, pretty cool. Now, let me explain what's going on down here. Down here, it's kind of giving me a preview of the render because 3D objects do need to be rendered for their final quality. Um, I can look at that as a window or I can go full screen with that. And then in a few seconds here, it will give me a draft render of what that looks like. So it'll render the properties onto it. Um, if it were low enough to the ground to cast a shadow, it will show the shadow on the ground. Uh, it will basically show me all the materials of what that looks like and it just keeps getting better the longer, the longer I look at it. So I can stand here and just keep looking at it and make, until it renders all the way out. Or I can say, okay, that's kind of the way I want it to look. Maybe I need to move it over a little bit to the right, but you get the idea. So we'll toggle back over to um, just the preview window. We'll grab the move tool and we'll move it over, over. Over. I'm not moving the right thing here. There we go. Didn't have the whole object selected. There we go. Move it over and down just a little bit. Right there. Now, again, I could be done. I could say, great, I've added a copper shopping bag to this. Um, I've changed the materials. But there are a couple more things I want to do. What if you wanted to put something... You didn't want just a material on the bag. You wanted to actually put your own um, asset on the bag. So, for example, if we go back to Photoshop, I've got a Photoshop file here. Um, it's a graphic from my uh, holiday gift guide. And I'd love to put that actually on the bag. Now, since that bag only had two surfaces, one being the bag itself, the other one being the strap, if you put a logo on it, 
it doesn't know it's a logo. It's going to wrap the logo around the whole bag. So as you can see here, I, I, I made a Photoshop file with a lot of white space around it because that white space is what's going to wrap around the bag. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now when we head back over to Felix, what I'm going to do is uh, select that material one more time. And what I can now do is just go over here to the base color and I can click on this image icon and I can go get my own texture just by clicking the folder. So when I get, click the folder, that will let me go out and find the one that says, you know, holiday gift guide with white space. That's the one I uh, exported out as a JPEG. And I can bring that in and there it is. It put it right on there. Now, if I said, hey, I need, I wanted that to be a little bit more centered on the bag or lower, then I want to go back and add more white space to the top of that image. So that's the way it works. You don't really get a way that I know of to position it in here once you've applied it. But um, good enough. Now it looks totally, totally fake. The reason it looks totally, totally fake is because it's a solid white bag with you know, no, no context of where the scene is. In other words, it's not bringing in any of the properties for where that desert scene is. If that was a white bag, especially one that was kind of shiny and reflective, it would be taking on some of that color of the surrounding area. So one of the coolest things I like about Felix is the ability to go to the background. Now this is the photo and I can create a light from the image. In other words, instead of me trying to figure out what lights would look best shining on that bag, why don't you turn the image into a light for me? So once I do that, it will not only create a light from the image, but it will apply it and light the bag accordingly and everything else in the scene for that matter. Um, so there we have it. And now I've got a more realistic looking color of the bag. Now I can go back and I can uh, go back to that material and I can uh, choose, you know, for example, maybe it's not as metallic. I can bring that down. Uh, maybe the density is a little higher or not. I can adjust that. I can adjust the translucence of it or not. So uh, if I thought it was a little too gold, I can bring it down. But you can even see in the little part that's flipped up, it's even reflecting some of the blue in the dress onto the back. So it's uh, behaving perfectly in this environment. And again, if we go back um, to the scene itself and we were to uh, rotate the bag, as you can see, it's now taking on the surrounding colors. So if I rotate it back that way, it's now reflecting what it sees uh, in this environment. So very cool to be able to do that. You know what, while I'm here, oh, we tilt it down just a little bit that way. It's kind of swinging up a little bit too much. All right, so. We brought in a photo, we brought in a 3D object that was free built in, we applied our own texture to it, our own materials to it, we created a light source directly from the image, and, and it applied to the object, we changed our, our, um, our plane um, of where the our ground plane is, of where this is all, our, you know, where the 3D objects behave and how they behave to it. The only thing left is to actually render out a photo. So from here, what I can do is go into the render mode. We were in design mode. We can go to render and um, I can choose how I want this rendered out. Um, so low and fast is gonna be just that, low quality, but it's gonna be fast, to the highest, slowest way of doing it, which could, depending on the resolution and the speed of your machine, could take minutes, could take hours, could, depends on what you're doing. So I'm gonna keep it on low and fast for now um, we're going to call this uh, new bag uh, CC just so we know which one it is. And I can now start the rendering process. Once I start the rendering process, it will do just that. It will start rendering. Now, um, so here, here comes the bag and starting to go through the rendering process. Now I'm on a three-year-old laptop or a two-year, two and a 2.75-year-old laptop. So it's not the fastest 3D render in the world but um, it, will do, it will get the job done. We're not gonna wait for it though. I've got one already rendered out that we're gonna go look at. But once it's done rendering, the render button will come back, your file will be saved out where you saved it, and best of all, I chose to do it as a Photoshop layered file. Now one more thing, if you're in a hurry, while you're waiting for the rendered version, because it's continuing to make it better and better on screen, 
And by the way, it just finished. I was going to say, in the meantime, you can click snapshot and that will um, give you a ping file of whatever current state the file is in. Uh, so for example, let's say I do want a higher ver version of that. I can go back and say, uh, make this CC2, for example. And you know what? Give me the one that's going to take a while, but I want the full quality. Go ahead and render that out. And so while that's rendering at any given, you know, we don't want it now. We do have to wait for the bag. Once we got the bag in there uh, and the bag starts to look good, we can click snapshot and that will produce a snapshot wherever you save it. At any given time, you can keep making those as long as you want. So if someone's in a hurry saying, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, what's it going to look like? You can send them that snapshot to say, okay, a few minutes longer or not. Um, but this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Okay, so now let's head back to Photoshop and let's go finish up. So in Photoshop, I got the one that I rendered out earlier at low quality. Again, uh, it's low quality. I don't expect it to be great. But let's go fix the, the, the strap problem. All right, so uh, here's my layered file. So the bag is there. My image is there. Everything's there. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to take that background image and duplicate it and put it on top. So now it's completely covering the bag. The bag is sandwiched in between. And what I want to do now is, and we'll call this layer uh, fingers. <laughs> That's what it will be. What I want to do now with the fingers layer is I want to hold down my option or alt key and double, and actually just click one time to add a layer mask that hides the entire top layer. So that entire top layer is hidden behind the mask. Now we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And we'll go ahead now and grab a paintbrush. We'll hit the letter B. We'll make sure we're in white paint. And we're just going to go in and we're just going to paint off that little bit of over the fingers so that the fingers show through. The top layer, which is just, by the way, uh, just that now, that shows through uh, so it looks like she's actually holding the strap. And there it is, again, a low-res version of it, but there it is. She's holding a bag that didn't exist in the scene, and now I'm free to do whatever I want to do with this image because I own, I own, own all the rights to it. It's, it was my photo, my logo, um, the bag is you know royalty-free for me to use, and away I go. So that's a first quick look at Project Felix. All Creative Cloud members can go ahead and download and install it now. Play around, let us know what you think. And this project, once it's, or once it's the real name of whatever it's going to be, and once it's released, uh, hopefully will only get better with your feedback. So with that, take care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. And cheers.